Hello and welcome everyone to the third webinar on machine learning. My name is Hardeep Jaglan, and this is a series of five machine learning webinars. The first two of them were presented by Paul LeGroth, and this one and the next one are going to be presented by me. And finally, Arno Hook will present the last fifth webinar on 23rd of April. In this webinar, we are going to go over various machine learning workflows in open detect pertaining to seismic predictions, log predictions, and seismic to log predictions. So we'll first start by going over some existing machine learning workflows, uh, namely waveform segmentation and the use of shallow neural networks for faces prediction. Thereafter, we'll dive deeper into the newer uh, algorithms for seismic applications, log applications, and seismic to log applications. For seismic applications, we are going to cover uh, uh, a fault uh, prediction, pre-trained deep unit network, as well as uh, seismic physics, physics prediction using um, a deep convolutional neural network. For uh, log application, we are going to go over a workflow uh, on predicting uh, porosity log from other existing logs using XGBoost algorithm. And finally, we'll end this webinar by uh, going over a workflow of uh, predicting volume of cards from angle stack seismic cubes using a random forest algorithm. Now, uh, the first uh, two algorithms, UVQ and uh, shallow neural network or multi-layer uh, perceptron have already been covered in terms of the theory by uh, Paul in the first webinar. And I'm going to now go over their application in the Open Detect software. So for all the workflows, we are going to use our F3 demo dataset and uh, uh, our newly created machine learning plugin is accessible by going into analysis machine learning. Uh, this is a dedicated uh, machine learning control center that we are building, uh, which uh, contains all machine learning related workflows in one place. Now, the first workflow that we are going to cover is, uh, as I said earlier, waveform segmentation or quick UEQ. For that, we are simply going to click here on horizon based seismic facies prediction in the seismics tab. So this pops up a little uh, window, which says QQ UEQ here. Here we have to simply select a horizon, a 3D horizon, for example, demo one. And our objective is to uh, segment the waveforms in a small time gate around this 3D horizon in a number of classes, for example, five here. So simply press OK. Now, the program here is training itself on a subset of the input seismic cube to cluster or classify uh, various waveforms in this time gate into five types or five classes. So we will stop when this average match value uh, gets flattened. And uh, this is not getting any higher or lower. We could already stop the training. Now, when we press OK, the program is going to apply the trained network on the entire horizon. So here you get this uh, class map. Uh, maybe we could change the default color bar to something like uh, AI5 classes, which is a, a discrete a custom color bar that I have created. And this allows us to see uh, geological patterns 
along this horizon from the seismic data. For example, we could see some channel-like uh, morphologies and perhaps some sound bars here. So this is a very quick and easy to use tool to get uh, uh, some insights about uh, uh, geology from your seismic. Now, another workflow that we have had in OpenDetect um, is of seismic facies prediction using shallow neural networks or multi-layer perceptrons. So we are going to go over this workflow uh, to create a chimney probability volume. Now, on this inline number 130 of the F3 seismic uh, survey, we have interpreted a few uh, point sets. In green, you see points corresponding to chimney activity, and in red uh, are the areas where we don't see any chimney uh, activity. Uh, now, in this uh, relatively conven conventional workflow, uh, we are going to need some input attributes that we are going to use to make uh, predictions um, whether a particular location has uh, higher or lower uh, probability of uh, having a gas chimney. So for this, we first go into analysis attributes 3D. We have in this drawer a pre-built attribute set um, for chimney detection. We select this. Here it asks for an input cube. So we are going to specify this uh, diff street remittance filter seismic and a steering cube. I will just go ahead with what it has selected. So it's a rather impressive and long list of uh, input attributes for detecting chimneys. We are simply just going to use them as it is. Uh, thereafter, we are going to go into our machine learning control center by clicking on uh, this menu item. Within this machine learning control center, we are going to go into this final, uh, the fourth uh, bottommost tab, neural networks. This is where we have integrated our old neural network plugin into this uh, newly built machine learning control center. We are simply going to go into Neural Networks 3D, press on Go. This is going to pop up uh, this uh, Neural Network Manager, which has been there for many years. We are going to go into Pattern Recognition, Point Sets. And here in this window, we are going to choose on the left-hand side all the input attributes that we have just defined in the attribute engine, except the ones which says no and an input in the name. And on the right hand side, we are going to provide the program examples of locations where we have picked some chimneys and where there are no chimneys. Finally, we are going to set aside 30% of this uh, data uh, as a test set. The test data is the data that has not been seen by the neural network to improve itself. We are going to just press on pause now. So in this window, we have to focus on the blue uh, normalized RMS uh, error curve. And uh, we have to stop where this blue curve uh, starts uh, getting flat, because this blue curve is the curve corresponding to the normalized RMS error on the test data set and is therefore a true measure of the performance of the neural network. The red curve, on the other hand, will continue going downwards in terms of this uh, normalized RMS error. So I could already stop my training here as the blue curve, uh, the blue normalized RMS error curve 
for the test data has uh, started to become flat. Simply press on OK. So the neural network is trained. Now we can apply it on the fly, first of all, on in line number 690 to see how it behaves. So we simply right click, add attribute, neural networks, chimneys, yes. If we are satisfied with the performance of uh, the neural network for predicting chimney probability on this inline, we could run the neural network on the entire survey. In real world uh, scenario, we would probably apply the neural network on the fly on a number of inlines and cross lines or random lines before um, processing it in the full. So here we would use a color bar like chimney and perhaps something like this for the color scheme. And here we know that there are a couple of chimneys, gas chimneys that we could see on this seismic. And uh, the shallow neural network has been successfully able to predict them as, uh, as possible locations of gas chimney activity. So now I could go ahead and run this entire cube in full. So now we are going to go over a couple of newly created deep learning workflows uh, for seismic based predictions. First of all, we are going to use a pre-trained unit type of auto encoder to predict fault probability from the seismic. And secondly, we are going to use a convolutional, a deep convolutional neural network to predict seismic fishes. So now we go over to the live demo. We go again into our machine learning control center And in here, we are going to go into the Seismics tab and go into this UNET 3D Fault Predictor pre-trained model by pressing on Go. This pops up this little Apply UNET uh, pre-trained Fault Predictor model window. And in here, we are going to select simply a Seismic Cube for example, we'll go ahead with this uh, distributed median filter cube. We'll use uh, simply the, the default parameters here. However, we are going to apply it only on uh, one inline number 250 for this quick demo. I'm currently running this uh, workflow on a CPU. However, if I were to run uh, this uh, application on a GPU, it could finish uh, the entire F3 cube in a couple of minutes. Now, simply we have to give a name like fault probability unit and simply press on run. This pops up uh, a little uh, progress viewer window and uh, it's going to finish very quickly now. So the processing has already finished. And now we can actually go ahead and have a look at it in uh, the 3D scene. So I'm going to just close these windows, add default data, go to inline number 250, which is where we made the prediction. So now we are going to display the result here. This uh, fault probability from UNET seems to be uh, thick now, so we could uh, make it thinner, such that it uh, is equivalent to our thin for likelihood attribute. 
by going into fault and fractures control center, uh, filters, skeletonization. We select this fault probability from unit, uh, give a threshold like 0.2 to keep everything above 0.2 for this thinning. Now we call it thinned and press on run. This, uh, this thinning has already finished. We could close this and display the thinned fault probability on the inline. Let's use a color bar, chimney, a transparent color bar. Something like this. And you could see some nice fault anomalies. <clears throat> Let's compare it uh, with the uh, thin fault likelihood. So again, a chimney color bar for transparency. And as you could see that thin fort likelihood shows uh, way too many anomalies and also these, uh, these blobs, which are obviously not uh, false compared to the results from uh, fault probability from unit, which only highlights the major fault uh, uh, liniments or patterns. So now we are going to go over the second seismic facies prediction workflow using a deep convolutional neural network, the LANET in, uh, in this case. And we start this workflow by interpreting a number of seismic facies as uh, point sets around this inline number 425 of the F3 demo data set. So the point sets correspond to uh, various uh, facies. For example, uh, salt dome, uh, these clinoforms that you see here, and uh, these uh, chaotic uh, uh, reflectors. Um, once we have these point sets ready, we could go into our machine learning plugin or the machine learning control center. And uh, in here, we simply have to go into the seismic tab uh, we click on uh, the seismic bodies, supervise 3D, and press on go. So here we see this uh, seismic classification window, which contains three tabs, extract data, train, and apply. Uh, this is going to be the underlying philosophy in almost every workflow in, uh, uh, in the machine learning control center of OpenDetect will always extract data for training a machine learning algorithm. Uh, uh, and obviously, will perform the training afterwards. And then in the end, we'll apply the uh, trained machine learning model. Now, uh, in this step, we go into uh, uh, the input data selection by clicking here. Here, we have to define uh, point sets corresponding to various uh, classes or various seismic facies, uh, in this case, uh, which can be done across multiple surveys. So in principle, I could have point sets corresponding to uh, salt uh, uh, domes across multiple surveys, which I can select here to train uh, a machine learning model. Uh, I have already saved a class definition here for uh, the five uh, facies. Uh, of this uh, this example, <clears throat> we could, which you could see here. Uh, so in the first column, you, we have the class uh, names or faces names. And the second column contains the name of the point set corresponding to those faces or those uh, classes, and the number of picks in total for each class and across how many surveys have they been picked. In this example, we are only using a single F3 survey. So we uh, go to the next step of um, um, <clears throat> input data selection. In this case, we have to select at least one seismic volume. In addition, we could always select more attribute volumes. Um, so we are going to now uh, define cubelet dimensions uh, for each of the points of uh, our example point sets. 
Uh, let's go ahead with uh, the default Kubelet dimensions and call our deep learning example data set as uh, something like uh, five classes uh, example data. Now, the program is extracting little seismic cubelets using this deep stream median filter seismic around all the uh, points or all the picks of our input uh, point sets. And these little cubelets will essentially be uh, thrown to a deep convolutional neural network, which is going to recognize various uh, features. In our case, these fishes within those uh, cubelets. So the extraction of the uh, cubelet example data is finished. We could now go into the uh, training tab. In the training tab, we see uh, that we could use uh, uh, two uh, different machine learning platforms. The first one is uh, Keras TensorFlow, which is primarily used for uh, deep learning. And uh, the second one is uh, Scikit-learn, uh, which is uh, mainly used for uh, the classical machine learning. Um, for example, to use random forest, linear regression, support vector machines, etc., etc. Uh, now we are going to stick to the deep uh, learning platform of Keras uh, come TensorFlow. And we are going to quickly have a look at uh, the parameters. We are using a, a LANET type of uh, a deep convolutional neural network architecture here. Uh, gradually with time, we are planning to incorporate uh, more uh, machine learning or deep learning, I shall say, architectures here like uh, MobileNet, ResNet, VGGNet, uh, and so on. So we are just going to use the default parameters and we are going to give a name to uh, the output deep learning model. We could call it something like a Lanet uh, default five classes. And we can simply press on run to start the training of uh, this uh, deep convolutional neural, uh, neural network architecture on these cubelets uh, 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 that we have extracted from our point sets. So the machine learning uh, uh, training has started, which is going to pop up this uh, tensor board, which you could have a look at to see how uh, the accuracy, the training accuracy, training loss, uh, as well as the validation accuracy and validation loss are changing with time. Um, so I'm going to minimize this uh, this tab, and uh, you can see that uh, you also uh, get this uh, log window where it uh, gives you information about uh, various uh, uh, steps in the uh, model training here. So uh, quite soon we are. Uh, going to finish it. Actually, the training has just uh, finished. And uh, at the end, it prints the, uh, the <clears throat> architecture of uh, the deep uh, convolutional neural network we have used here, the net in this case. Mm, and it has saved the model uh, on disk, the trained model that is. So we are going to close it and uh, go into the apply tab. Um, so the model that we have just saved is Lanet uh, default five classes. We click on proceed to apply it uh, on um, a line further away from where we have interpreted our point sets. Uh, so let's choose the line as uh, 650, press OK. Uh, we will give it a name like uh, Lanet 5 class prediction and press on run. This is going to pop up this uh, application uh, progress viewer. The application uh, 
of the trained machine learning model has started. It's uh, going to finish shortly now. So we see that uh, the application has just finished successfully. Uh, we could close all these little windows out of our array and uh, go to the inline 650 here and see how the predicted results look like. Again, we can use a, uh, a discrete uh, color bar like AI5 pluses that I have, one to five. And uh, yeah, we see that it's nicely able to pick these salt domes here, as well as these chaotic reflectors and these clanner forms here, and this uh, shallow bright spot, high energy bright spot uh, here. If you are uh, happy and satisfied with the results, you could uh, then process uh, or apply, I shall say, the trained deep learning model in the entire 3D volume. So after having covered uh, two applications of uh, deep neural networks for seismic-based uh, predictions, we are going to go into the log domain. And uh, we are going to discuss now uh, a porosity log prediction workflow from other existing logs using uh, the XGBoost algorithm in the scikit-learn uh, framework. Uh, this algorithm, like others, has already been uh, discussed by Paul in the second webinar. And I'm simply going to now uh, uh, give a live demo of the algorithm in our uh, OpenDetect software. So just like uh, before, we are simply going to go into the machine learning control center. And in here, we are going to select uh, the wells tab to perform workflows related to wells or well log data, uh, we select log log prediction and press on go. Now, just like the previously uh, uh, discussed uh, seismic facies prediction workflow using the deep convolutional neural network, we have uh, a similar log log prediction window here. We are going to, again, start simply by extracting the data uh, for training a machine learning algorithm, XGBoost in our case. Uh, so first of all, we have to select uh, a target log, porosity in this case, uh, and um, we are going to choose uh, three wells for training. And we will leave the top F21 well aside for, uh, uh, for a blind test. And thereafter, we are going to choose the input logs to predict porosity, uh, density, sonic gamma ray, press OK. Now um, we are going to uh, leave all the parameters as default. The important parameter here is the step out from central sample, which is basically uh, how many uh, uh, samples besides the central sample we want to uh, uh, take into consideration at each, uh, each central sample. So we call it uh, um, phi prediction from uh, rho b dt gamma ray and click on proceed. So once uh, that extraction of the input uh, uh, deep learning example data is finished. Um, uh, we go into the train tab and uh, for uh, this log prediction exercise or porosity log prediction exercise, we are going to use uh, the cycle learn machine learning framework, which is ideal for a small or relatively small data sets. Uh, in here, we are going to go into the parameters tab, and as you can see, we have a number of algorithms built in here. From the ensemble type, we are going to choose XGBoost. Uh, we are just going to increase uh, this uh, maximum depth parameter to 10. 
we'll give it a name uh, so that uh, machine learning model will be called XGBoost Five Predictor, and we'll just press on Run. Again, this uh, little log window pops up where it uh, tells us, uh, us uh, what it's doing in this uh, machine learning training step. So far, data has been preloaded. Machine learning training has uh, now started. In fact, it has already finished. Uh, it has saved the model. So we could close this log viewer and uh, head towards apply. And we select our XGBoost 5 predictor, click on proceed to apply it on our blind well F21. Obviously, we have to define the corresponding logs, uh, which it has automatically chosen correctly. And we have to give a name for the predicted porosity log. We just use uh, the, the name uh, uh, suggested by the software and click on run. So the log has been successfully created. Uh, we could close uh, the machine learning control center and go into uh, the well manager here uh, to QC the predicted porosity log uh, from XGBoost and compare it with uh, the available porosity log for this F21 blind well. Uh, we could simply click on this uh, button to go into this well table spreadsheet and select the F21 well and click here uh, on this newly built cross plot uh, wells tool in the bouquet uh, library of the Python uh, programming language. So in this uh, window, we simply have to choose our two logs. So let's say we choose porosity on X axis and porosity from XGBoost on uh, Y axis. And uh, we do get a pretty nice, uh, almost a linear um, diagonal relationship between the two on the cross plot, as well as uh, on the log plot uh, here, uh, we see uh, that uh, the two logs in blue and orange are overlapping each other very nicely. So all in all, uh, the XGBoost has done a decent uh, job to predict uh, the proxy log uh, for this uh, blind well. So finally, we are going to go over a uh, volume of quartz uh, cube prediction from um, three angle stack seismic cubes uh, using the random forest algorithm, uh, which has already been discussed in the previous webinar uh, in the Open Detect uh, uh, Machine Learning Control Center. So just like uh, before, we simply head towards our machine learning control center. And um, in the machine learning control center, we need to go into the seismic plus uh, wells tab. In here, uh, we choose uh, the 3D seismic rock property prediction workflow and hit go. Just like uh, before, um, we get uh, a window uh, which contains three tabs. So we are going to go ahead with the first um, step of data extraction. Um, we need to specify a target log here, um, requires. Again, we will use uh, the three bottom wells as uh, 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 the wells for training, and we will leave the top F21 well aside as a blind test well. Here, I would like to mention that uh, this workflow can also be uh, implemented across multiple surveys, uh, uh, although here we are only using the F3 demo survey. Um, <clears throat> Uh, now, uh, the second step is to select uh, the input uh, seismic uh, or uh, other attribute volumes that you might have for this uh, prediction work. Uh, in our case, we'll just check in seismic uh, stack at 18 degrees, 28 degrees, and 8 degrees. And we press on OK. 
Um, the next window asks us to specify um, uh, the step outs uh, for uh, the log upscaling. We'll use just the default step out of two meters, um, as well as it asks us uh, for uh, the seismic uh, sampling step outs, uh, which is just uh, to say that uh, with this uh, default parameter, we are going to look uh, 16 milliseconds up, uh, 16 samples above and below in addition to the central sample uh, when we perform the uh, model training. So just uh, provide a name. Uh, I will call it uh, V quartz from three ang angle stacks and click on proceed. And thereafter, we could go to the train tab. In there, um, uh, we will simply choose this uh, scikit-learn framework again, as we are uh, still working with limited data set, only three wells, and uh, the seismic uh, angle stack traces around those three wells are going into this uh, model training now. We'll just use this the uh, default random forest uh, regressor model here with uh, its uh, default parameters. Um, in this example, uh, we simply have to give uh, the name to this um, model. We just call it random forest v quartz from three angle stacks and hit run. This uh, pops up this little uh, machine learning. Uh, training log viewer window where we could uh, keep an eye on what's happening with our training. And because the data here is, is a very small, only three wells, it's finished already. Um, so we could close this, uh, this guy and um, just select our random for SV course from three angle stacks and uh, click on proceed. Now, uh, first of all, we need to specify the course, the correct uh, data it has automatically selected the three cubes. Uh, then we can apply this uh, uh, random forest trained model only on, let's say, one inline 362, which goes through the blind well. And once we are satisfied with the results, we could run it again in uh, in the full uh, full survey. So let's call it uh, v uh, v quartz. from random forest and uh, simply press on run. Uh, we see this uh, progress viewer uh, where uh, the application of this uh, random forest uh, uh, model on one in line is being carried out. It's uh, going to take uh, a minute or so. The process is uh, just about to finish. Uh, in fact, it has just finished. You can close all these uh, these little windows and uh, show the 362 number in line here in the 3D scene of Open Detect as well as uh, the blind well with this uh, v quartz uh, log here and uh, now we just add uh, the v quartz created using our random forest uh, algorithm uh, for a fair comparison that's just use the same color bar i think i've used 0 to 0.5 and uh, yeah Again, it seems to have done a, a good job here uh, to predict uh, uh, V quads from uh, the three seismic angle stacks. Um, so we could uh, indeed go ahead and apply it in, in the 3D, uh, in the entire 3D volume. So uh, finally, I would like to uh, conclude this webinar by mentioning that uh, we are continuously uh, working towards improving and expanding upon uh, various machine learning workflows we have, uh, providing uh, more machine learning algorithms 
and implementing uh, more deep learning architectures, and especially towards uh, providing a more uh, pre-trained models for seismic and uh, well data predictions. Uh, for example, a, a salt dome predictor model or a North Sea uh, porosity log uh, uh, predictor uh, pre-trained model. Mm, um, thank you very much.